Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Hi. everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bikini in the Brain. I am here with the lovely Ashley Caldwell, sir. Hi, hi. <laughs> we have sound effects. Yes. So uh, th this, t this episode is going to be a different episode, and it is called Not Your Typical Q&A. So um, we've been doing a lot of lives on Instagram and um, getting the audience involved, and this is going to be a lot different. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube and whatnot, we usually do this, so usually on Monday... We've um, been slacking with that lately, yeah, huh? Yeah, today's Tuesday. I had a pipe break yesterday, and uh, my backyard was and like... And then the previous last la last week, yeah. I, I was too jet lagged. Yeah, and that's no, that's understandable. <laughs> I had a pipe break, and I was like in four inches of water in my backyard. I was... I was, it was. Why didn't you invite me to the pool party? It was so funny. I went outside, and, and like, I was... I went outside, and I was just in, like... It was covering my shoe worth of water, and then Kimber's like... She came out, she's like, what happen i was like you said you wanted a pool and like i just like straight faced her with it too. <laughs> like it was, it was it was a it was bad so anyway i had a pipe break so that's we'll see what that water bill looks like it's gonna be a thousand dollar water bill it was like literally four inches pool like in my backyard oh, i'm just glad i didn't go in the house but anyway so not your typical q a is questions that you guys um wouldn't normally get give us so uh for example um you guys would be usually like hey, how long will it take for me to build muscle in my glutes or something like that? That This is going to be totally different. You know, what do I do when I'm hungry in prep or what do I do when I'm sad in prep and can't get past the the the, the thoughts that I'm not going to be ready in time? Things like that. So it's about the feels. The feels, the things that we wouldn't normally talk about. Um, you know, uh, we had one question come in about periods, like, you know, things like that. Like, what do I do? Like that type of scenario. So these aren't your typical bodybuilder questions. These are very contest prep kind of psychological or feels questions. The feels. So you guys that are listening Getting in the feels um, on Instagram, ask those questions. We're going to start it. We're going to answer some of them live. We already have a couple of the questions there, but um, yeah, please ask those questions. The ones that you didn't think that you would normally ask. And we will, we will go right into them. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> so what's our, what's our first question, Ashley? Our first question is how do you do this? If you don't have support. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> good you know what uh ashley mm -hmm. i think is that a well that could be a both of us question yeah. you know that could be a both of us question totally so um you know what it's funny is i heard this quote the other day and it said even it was something along the lines of <clears throat> even if everyone's saying that what you're doing is even as, if everyone doesn't agree with what you're doing if it makes you happy it's right mm -hmm. you know and yeah. um and i think that that with this sport is super like really important. And I, I would say that growing up my whole life, my family always gave me crap for it just because, you know, they're, you know, Mexican, like immigrant family. And they just like at dinner time they eat. And it's just like, that's all they do is they feed the men. Like, like they just, that's their thing. Like you're, you, you need like two plates of food minimum. Like it's just, that's just how it is. And, um, <laughs> and especially the guys, you just sit there waiting for it to be fed. It's the weird, it's the, it's the, you know, it's cultural, it's a cultural thing. Um, but for me, I mean, since I was like 12 years old, uh, you know, it was like, they're like, oh, we have to have our chicken for Adam and have these things separate. And they'd always kind of give me crap about it. And that was all the way growing up. And I was just like, hey, I just like, I want to do this. You know, I want to be a bodybuilder. I want to do this. And so it was always, um, it, you know, it just, it took, what it took for me in my family or in relationships or with friends even that were like, hey, you know, have a drink with us, have food with us. It's just one bite, things like that. Mm -hmm. It usually takes the one time of, uh, only takes about one time each of telling them, that, hey, this is important to me. Like, if you just don't, I'm not going to do it, you know, type of thing. And then they just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, I feel like it's the people who are always giving in here and there that get stuck in that trap of people always telling them that. Because after that, it's for me, it was pretty, pretty good. But now in support of the actual journey, that's a different thing. You know, I think that you could probably handle that maybe a little better. Do you have any yeah. uh, suggestions on that? Well, I think like, you know, some of that, um, Uns or lack of support comes from just not understanding and we got to realize that not everyone is going to be familiar with our sport and not everyone's going to even know what contents prep is you know sometimes the average person thinks like you're they'll ask me if I'm a bodybuilder and I'm like well I mean <laughs> 
not really. <laughs> I'm bikini. It's much different, but they, they have the impression I'm up there flexing on stage. Like, no, 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 that's totally different division. Um, but you know, you have to realize that not everyone is going to know and understand your lifestyle, you know, and, and just like you said, you have to explain it to them and you tell them it means something to you. This is why I do this. I'd prefer not, uh, not to do that. Um, and you know, what I'm trying to say is give everyone a chance, right? People that don't understand, give everyone a chance. We can't assume everyone's going to understand at, at first, right? But, you know, you can only give so many chances. And I think, like, especially, like, over time, I've really developed a me-against-the-world attitude. And I've become so freaking good at cutting people off that don't, like, they don't benefit me in any way as far as, like, making me happy. Um, you know what I mean? If If they're just there to drag me down and to, you know, kind of just stress me out. I don't need it. Like I've become so good at that. Like, okay, bye. Like, you know, without even a second thought, because, you know, at some point it does become like, well, you know, you explained everything you could to them. And if if it's still like an issue to them, like it really shouldn't be because at the end of the day, you're the one that's prepping, not them. Like, it shouldn't affect them at all, right? Who cares if you eat chicken and broccoli and they're eating pizza if you go out to eat? Like, what, like, how is this affecting their life, you know? You're the one eating it, not them. It's your taste buds. And and it goes towards many things, you know? Um, So, yeah, I don't know. I would say just... At some point, you gotta you gotta have to develop a thick skin and just be like, "Hey, this is how it is. If you don't like it, bye." Yeah, no, I like we're we're the same in that regard. Even when it comes to that, I've learned that I've learned that you know, unfortunately, I learned it through tougher lessons in my life. That it's the the cost of keeping someone in your life. It has a cost to it. Yeah. Whether it's a hopefully it's a positive cost, um, you know, and it's like it's there's an equal exchange of happiness versus you know uh, uh, you know the the bad parts. The, there's a ups and yeah. downs with it. But if someone's just an energy vampire to you and you're Mm -hmm. constantly trying to please them, I think naturally we just try to be people pleasers. Right. And a lot of us just won't, you know, say, say goodbye. It's like too mean, right? Too mean. I'm like, no, what's too mean is letting someone in your life that's just toxic to you, you know? And so, you know, um, like even previous like family members I've talked about on family that owed me like a lot of money. And I was like, hey, you know what? Like it cost me X dollars to have this person out of my life who was completely energy draining. It was a good deal. Like, yeah. you know, and it's like the same thing with prep, especially, especially like relationship wise, if someone's giving you crap when, um, when you're bringing your Tupperware and stuff, like just, just as a guy, you know, if I'm going to dinner somewhere and a, a girl brings Tupperware, Hey, don't save me half the, half the bill. I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not getting bad about saving $30 on your chicken. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> you know, so who's, who cares about that? That's the weird thing. Like who cares about that? I don't like, understand. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like it's almost like, do you, does it make you feel guilty if I'm eating healthy and you're not or something like, you know, I don't yeah. know what, what the logic is, but I like how you worded that energy vampire. Yeah. That is true. Do you ever like have those people that should, like, you just don't, look forward to seeing them even if they're not necessarily your friend maybe your acquaintance you're just like i just just it's like a rain cloud that follows them and you're just like i don't want to have to deal with this person yeah as i've gotten older i've just been better at just completely xing xing them out of my life and it's not and it's what i've learned too is that never be mad because it it builds up in you right to be mad at them but to just be indifferent about them is really easy to do just I'm like you're just one block button away from just being out of my life and me not being mad at you and you just not existing to me anymore just like you're just a passerby or that I just don't know you know I'm not going to invest any negative energy on you but you're just you're just not po- adding any positivity to my life and it's just not worth the investment of my time to be to have you there anymore and I think that some people really need to take some reflection of their circle and realize okay who's positive in my circle and who's bringing me down and make those decisions you know right i've always i've always put a lot of time into the quote um a lot of thought into the quote of you're the sum of the five closest people you're that surround you right and like i keep my circle is very well known to me now like it's like like you and sam and tori and people here right? it's like my circle is very there's nothing that's going to surprise me in that circle there's always going to be positivity in that circle you know there's going to be our things that have come up we're humans but like you know it's i've i've put I mean, very careful who goes in that circle, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's important too, to assess that. And, and so I think, I think some people really do have to assess that. I think people have to look at it and say, Hey, am I just people pleasing? And that's why this guy, this girl's in my life. And I really should have put him out of it a long time ago. And I think that you have to toughen up and 
maybe make that decision what's best for your life. You know, that could be the case. Yeah, totally. And then, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be that extreme as in like, oh, I'm never going to talk to you again. But <laughs> maybe even just distancing yourself can be beneficial, even if it's for a period of time. Right. Maybe this person um, <laughs> does have some redeeming qualities, but you just don't want to deal with it at the point in time. Just, you know, don't feel bad about putting yourself first. I think that's, you know, are you living for someone else is the question. Cause I know, I know I'm not shoot, you know, <laughs> you know, I think in order for you to make other people happy, you got to be happy yourself. Like don't, don't feel bad about like putting yourself first sometimes and just doing what's best for you. You know, I just, it's a shame. Cause I, I do see, I do it see a lot, a lot of people just like live for somebody else. And I'm just like, Ooh, I, will. It happen- I see, I see it happen more often than not with, uh, in honestly in bikini division, I see it in the bodybuilding division too, but it's a little bit less because the girls who are dating bodybuilders usually know going into it, but as they become more extreme is where the problems come in with the guys. Uh, like when they're in prep, like it, their whole life is totally different, you know, and their attitude and everything's different. I think that's more of an attitude issue with the guys than it is with the actual girl. I think the girls don't want to deal with the attitude more so than not understanding that they're in prep, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but with the, the, the girl to guy, the bikini to, you know, boyfriend or whatever, um, what I, what I see coming becoming common as, as the girls improving, um, especially with like transformations, it's more transformation than anything. Like the girl starts off, she's lifting weights. Um, maybe the guy's not that serious about lifting weights. She's getting more confident. She's feeling better about herself. She's starting to take different p- type of pictures in the gym. She's showing her abs and then it goes to, you know, booty pick type things. And then like the guy's like, Oh, I'm losing the girl I knew. And they had, they have confidence issues. So they start like kind of fighting prep because they're, they're kind of more scared of losing her type of scenario or um maybe not as confident i don't know what the Mm -hmm. issues are but that's where i see where the guys are like i don't like prep i don't like prep and it causes this like causes the issue and that's where like the breakups usually will will come in um you know so part of it is the growth of you if if the growth of you is is scaring someone else like you got to decide you know the growth of you is probably going to be the best decision you know holding yourself back for someone else is usually the wrong decision you know i i don't know of a scenario where it's not the right where it's it's not so um, so that's another important one too, to realize, Hey, if you're, if your people change and if you're growing and someone can't appreciate that and help that, then they're probably the wrong person in your life. You know, like if the person that you're with should make you better, it should never be bringing you down or holding you back or you're fighting your number one world's passion. It should be this person's like in your corner, like your go-to, your ride or die, you know, like helping you, you know? So, um, just something to think about. And there's a, and I see it in all sides and I see the, 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 and honestly, I see the girls who do like really good. A lot of times have like an awesome support system or at least a go ahead and do it, babe support system. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's either one of those two, either they're like, they're there working out with them. super excited at every show. Or they're like, no restrictions. Do your thing, babe. Like proud of you. You're great. You know, how'd you do like that type of, even if they're not like super involved. So, but the ones that have the, the problems are like fighting them all the time, fighting their family, fighting their parents, that type of thing. So Mm -hmm. anyway, um, I got a good question for you from Muscle Egg. Muscle oh, Egg, by the way, guys. The, my 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 Muscle Eggs, man, they keep, <laughs> me, keep me going. If you guys want to support the channel ever and you get Muscle Egg, go muscleegg.com forward slash Team Elite Physique. That gives Ashley a little bit of a little bit more Muscle Egg to keep her going and doing these backflips. <laughs> so so uh, thanks, Muscle Egg, and they uh, they feed me quite well. They send me uh, a, f- a few gallons a month of Muscle Egg and a. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Kimber, Kimber takes advantage of every ounce of that stuff. So, uh, all right. He says, our muscle egg says, um, all right, we got to know if the worm celebration is part of Team Elite Physique training. Oh, God. <laughs> it's it's um, designed to make Adam extremely uneasy. It's, it's how I punish him. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay with the worm. The back flips in, high, in four, five, five inch heels is... Uh, it, dry, it makes my heart. And really. they were strapless, might I add. Oh That's my talent! Right it's so you know, it makes me. I get I get mad because I'm like Ashley. You're like I think of these NFL athletes that start making money and then they buy these like motorcycles and stuff. And I'm like, guy, you're getting, you're at the peak of your career. You're getting like these guys are getting like twenty million dollars. Like I'm gonna go buy a bike, and I'm like. That's the dumbest thing you should do, right? Well, <laughs> but but you you do backflips on high hills. How and- am I? You know the gr- the best way to be comfortable on stage and in heels and walking in heels and transitioning and turning in heels is to do is this the back counter, flips. Is this the counter argument for real? Um, Are we here to run <laughs> and to do worms? I mean, if you think about it, if you can do a back flip in heels, you can do anything. You know, in heels, Pretty, like it's. 
what's a transition, you know? <laughs> what What is a back walk if, if you can do a, a if, back handspring? If Ashley was with Lance Armstrong on the moon, the first step on the moon would have been in a shoe fairy clear heels. Lance Armstrong? Lan- oh, no, Lance Armstrong. Uh, Neil, what? Neil Armstrong. Armstrong. Neil Isn't Armstrong? Is it Lance Armstrong what, the guy a- that the cyclist... Who is the, who's the, yeah, Lance Armstrong's on a bicycle. He's a juiced yeah. up biker. I, I like, I mean, I don't know what he'd be doing on the moon, but. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, who's the guy I'm talking about? Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong? Okay. All right. Look at you, Ashley. No, off topic. Uh, well, uh, you know. History. That's pretty good. It, it com- it, it's, it's, um, common misconception. We're not all that stupid, us bikini girls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I just randomly. Oh, that. so here's the quote. Uh, if it makes, if it makes you happy, it doesn't need to make sense to anyone else. That's exactly. Oh, clap, clap. Uh, is it this clap. one? You tell me. Wait, I think it's a, get a marker. <laughs> oh, no. no <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. We have, uh, we have sound effect. You guys can't you hear it on Instagram. That. You gotta put little stickers on Yeah. It. I didn't even know I had sound effects. Yeah. That's, so a, cool. I like it. I like it. <laughs> that's, that's like a mic drop gotta, right there. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So, um, Let's go. What's actually the question you have? Next question you so have. So the next one we have is, what do you do about getting anxious before the show? And let me just say, that is so common. And in fact, I'll even say, like, if you're getting nervous or anxious, it actually can be a good thing because it shows you care, you know? It shows that your performance means something to you. It shows that, like, you, you know, it, it's heavy on your mind. And it should be, honestly. Because if you didn't care, and if you didn't want to be there, you'd just be like, oh, let's get this over with, like, you know. So I get anxious. I get nervous still. doesn't matter if it's the Olympia or a show with five girls in it. I will always get a little bit nervous. But I always have to say, you know, even for myself, I have to convince myself in a way that, like, I have to calm myself down and be like, you know what? It might seem like a big deal. It is a big deal. But you almost have to convince yourself it's not that serious. And I know that sounds a little odd to think that way, but if we take a step back and look at the bigger picture, your family's still going to love you. You're, you're, you still have a boyfriend. You still have two cats to come home to. Like nothing in your life is going to change other than the placement, regardless on how you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you think it's a bigger deal than what it is because you're in the moment because you're part of it all. But if you take a step back, is it something that anybody's even going to remember next year, you know? So I think, like, especially with social media, it can become more of that and more pressure. And, I, and I'll admit, I it's hard to follow my own advice sometimes when it comes to this because I do feel like all eyes are on me sometimes and that, like, if I don't do everything perfectly, it's like a, oh, you know? But if you really think about it, you have to just take a step back and just, you know, be like, hey, you know, this is a privilege to be here, and regardless of what happens, I had fun doing so, and I'm going to savor every moment, regardless of how well you do or how well you don't do, and it's just for fun. Yeah, I, I like to, when I have uh, an athlete who's a little bit anxious about that part of it, I try to just show them how exactly what you just said, like how serious it is, and I'll ask them, okay, who got, who got fifth place last year at that show in your class? And no one has ever been able to just off t- hand tell me, right? And the point of that is that, you know, no one is going to remember but you, you know, uh, you know, you win the overall and you're on the posters, like people are going to remember that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you don't do your best and you get fifth place, like no one's going to even remember it two weeks later, three weeks later. So it's just, it's just, it is a personal journey of you. It feels like everyone's going to remember and everyone's going to be like, oh my gosh, she wasn't there. Like you can even you know, not be at your best, not show up in shape. And, and a month later, no one's going to remember, you know, no one, it's not, it's not as big of a deal as we make it in our head is the, is the, is the whole point, mm-hmm. I think, you know, and um, it, it's just, I think that's important to think about when you go on stage, it's like, okay, this is, and why am I, why am I anxious in the first place? And you can look at, and I think I've talked about um, this before. And it was again, cus, custom motto. I feel like I always mentioned custom motto. Um, Mike Tyson's boxing coach, you probably heard me talk about a hundred times, but he talks about fear. Um, and, and Mike Tyson used to be super afraid before he would fight fights, which is like crazy. Cause he's, when, when we're talking, Mike Tyson was a f- talking about being afraid of fights, like even his first big fights like in, in, as a pro, he was actually about to, he said he wanted to leave and go in like, he was, he went outside, he wanted to go in a car and like get a taxi and leave. Like he was before his fight. And I'm like, Mike Tyson, that's, that's crazy. This guy was a killer of men. 
Like he was a war god <laughs> in the boxing ring, undefeated all knockouts for like 19 in a row. And he was afraid to fight, right? That tells you like, you know, how, how much it can build up. This anxiousness can build up. So he's like, he's, he, he told Mike, he was like, you know, what is fear? You know, what is it? And he's like, fear is just something um, that word is designed to keep you safe. It's designed to keep you from jumping off of a cliff. It's designed to keep you from jumping into a fire. It's a, it's a natural instinct to, to keep you alive. If there was no fear, we'd all be dead because we'd all be doing stupid things and not be afraid of anything. He's like, so that's what fear is. So when you get anxious, what is, it, what is being anxious before a big event? Well, your body's telling you you're pushing yourself to a limit, something that you're not used to doing, something that's past your comfort zone. And um, with time, you're going to get better at dealing with those things. But it also means it's important to you, you know? It means that you're pushing yourself past your, your, normal, your normal place. And what, what um, if you ask Ashley what her biggest fear is, it is? Being um, average. Being average, right? So if you're not pushing, I mean, yawning. <laughs> that was like, that was my bam moment. <laughs> you I ruined it. I ruined it. <laughs> no, but so being, you know, being average is her, her biggest fear. Uh, me too is like, my, one of my biggest fears is, is being in my deathbed and you know, at, you know, whatever, hundred years old, hopefully, and saying, you know, I wish I would have, I wish I would have, you know, that's my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And um, if you talk to um, in, Gary V did did this, he said, if you talk to people that are um, that are, what is it called when you're in like a, a house when you're dying? Is it hospice? Uh, it yeah, hospice. Um, so he's like, if you talk to people that are that are elderly, that are hospice, or whatever, that they're they're on their 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 way out. Um, they'll all talk about the things they didn't do more so than the things they did do. Like they're all talking about their regret in their life of how they did it. They just lived this average life. So yeah, pushing yourself past your comfort zone, pushing yourself to your limits, you're going to get anxious, you know, but living in the opposite of that, you're going to have the biggest regretful life when you can't do these things anymore. You know, when you're 70 years old, you're like, I maybe I'll do a bikini competition now. You're like, you know, it, you know how that's going to go. So the, the reality is, is that you have to push yourself like past your comfort zone. You have to push yourself past your limits if you want to grow as a person. And that's going to require you being anxious. Like when every time you take that next step, it, it is a coach too. I mean, there's, there's, there's times you get really anxious. You know, I was, I was worried about, you know, I was worried about Ashley's digestion recently and I couldn't sleep the whole night. He prayed to the poop guy yeah, and yeah, it worked. I woke, I, I couldn't sleep the whole night. And then, um, I couldn't, I can't even believe that still happens to me. You know, I usually, I'm just like chill, but I was like, but your, your digestion was, it was off. And I was like, your, you know, your stomach doesn't look where I, I, it usually did. And I woke up and I was like, I can't believe I'm still doing this. And he <laughs> woke up with a text and I was like, I pooped, but yeah. I, I used the emoji so to make it more cute. She used a firework emoji and a poop. <laughs> She's like, it happened. It That's happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! That's, that's, that was literally I was I was cracking I was dying laughing when I woke up or what when, when I was I was like four in the morning five in the morning when you wake up and I was just like it was like the funniest thing and I, know, I think I went in and out of sleep like two times for like thirty minutes. My well, I'm glad so you red. finally got to sleep after I said I pooped. Well, so. It's, it makes it it's embarrassing. He was at the show and I haven't seen anyone for a while, for a while and I had like really red eyes too. So people thought I was crying. <laughs> I, was, I was like, no, I just haven't slept. It was so oh. funny. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you to your bowels. I appreciate them, yes. them work being cooperative. <laughs> so, they, they, they really pull through at the last minute. You know? Why do they do this to us? Because they just like to stress us out. Stress us out. Uh, so, <laughs> well, so anyway, so yeah, being anxious, it's a good thing. Look at it as, you know, this is a, if, if I didn't care, I wouldn't be anxious. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't growing as a person, I would be in my comfort zone. I'm out of my comfort zone now. So this is a positive growth moment for me. Um, this is the same thing as like a fear. It's keeping me like how fear keeps me safe. This tells me I'm pushing past my limits. So look at it as a positive thing and not a negative thing that you're, you're nervous and embrace it, you know, embrace it. Um, just like you embrace a set, you know, a set doing exercise sucks sometimes, you know, when you're under a squat rack and you're like at rep eight and you got to go to 10 and you're like, shit, this way is heavy and it hurts and it burns or I'm doing leg extensions and it burns like crazy, but you know, it's going to get you that result. You still go through it because the result's worth it, right? Same thing with the anxiousness, right? So I think that just naturally in bodybuilding, you're training yourself to push yourself past your limits. And, and that's just another, that's just another set, baby. Just another set. So, um, another question there. Um, what do you do about fatigue at work? Ooh. I deal with that a lot, a lot. You know, I have my days. I'm not the best sleeper. You guys know that. I have very inconsistent sleep patterns, and I don't sleep as much as I should. And I always try to. I always do all the right things, and I always try to, you know, limit caffeine. I don't even drink caffeine past, like, 10 a.m. But 
I just, I'm just not good at sleeping, you know? Um, so, you know, I just have to kind of like, you know, well, first off, um, I think sometimes when you're super motivated, you don't even realize how fatigued you are. But, um, cause, cause it's like the adrenaline and excitement of a show is coming up kind of takes over sometimes, but you know, just realize you're going to have your days. It's part of life. You're going to have days where you're really tired. And then the next day you're going to sleep well and have a ton of energy and be very pleasant. But I think it's the times when we're fatigued and we're in a bad mood is when people really mess up. And that's when they kind of create really bad habits and patterns. And, um, you just got to tell yourself, you know what? Today is not a good day, but you know, tomorrow's going to be better. So I'm not going to use the excuse of it's a bad day to overeat, to slack off. I'm going to push through because that's going to make me a stronger person. And, um, you know, I think when we're tired and cranky, we just see, we see our day as like we're living it in the present, but we don't look far ahead. We don't see like, oh, wait. At the end of this month, I have a show coming up. I should probably, you know, get to work. I shouldn't slack because there's something better at the end of the tunnel, right? Um, so, yeah, just realize it's a day. You'll get through it. It's only going to last 24 hours. Then get some good sleep, and tomorrow you're going to be much better. You're going to be motivated and back on your game. I like that, Ashley. Yeah. We're getting some We're getting some decent questions in here. Okay. Uh, one of the one of the questions, and it was actually not really a question, but maybe you can give a, a tip on this. This is not your typical question podcast, so why not why not go into it? But um, this is kind of like our first uh, question that we had about you know people not being supportive. I have here. Um, I'm not going to say her name because it is a sensitive, probably sensitive topic. So she can if she wants on Instagram. But it says uh, perfect timing on this topic. I'm 12, 11 days out, um, and family members trying to tear me down, trying to keep the focus. Uh, what would you suggest? For, for that for that young lady? I mean, you know, that's like a, a difficult thing because it's family. It's a different story. But, I mean, even if you have to distance yourself temporarily and just let them know, like, I just can't, I can't deal with this right now and I'd rather not focus on negative um, parts of my life. You know, even if you have to separate yourself for a little bit, it's a temporary thing. I mean, at least that'll get you by till um, your show but I, that's something I would do. I'd be like, you know what? I just can't right now. I just don't want that. I just don't want those negative vibes. I'm going to kind of allow myself to distance a little bit for a short period of time. Yeah. You know, um, it's harder. It is harder with the family. I've had to have that discussion before, too. And um, I feel like if you say it the right way and you're not um, overly aggressive with it, but you say, you, you just make it very clear. You're like, hey, um, this is my life. And I think that you still think I'm seeking approval from you, but I'm not. I hope I have your support, but I am not. I don't need approval to do what I want to do. And if you like put that down like that and you're saying, hey, like I'm doing this either way, whether you like it or not, I hope you like it so you can be part of it um, in, a, in a nicer way, then usually um, – because I had this, I've actually had this talk. I had this talk with my mom actually. And, um, and she was like, she took a step back. She was like, whoa, okay. I think I made it mad. Right. And she was like, no, she's like, I'm sorry if I actually, if I'm sorry if I crossed my boundaries there. And I'm like, Hey, look, like I'm an intelligent man. I'm a grown man. You know, I'm going to make my decisions and I hope you support them, but I in no way of asking you for permission. Like, so it, just so we're clear on that, you know? And then she was like, cool. You know, like it was like, you just, but you have to say it. Otherwise they just, your parents is instinctually or your family instinctually just, you know, they have that kind of like, it's not like a control thing, but they have that kind of understanding power dynamic of, you know, hierarchy within the family. Right. And it's yeah. like, it's almost like you just, it's just instinctual. You just like, no, I'm, I'm, you're still eight years old. I'm just telling you what to do. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? And so you have to like establish that and, and have, hold your, hold your, put your feet down. And if you do, usually it just, it's just done, yeah. you know? It's, Make the boundaries clear, right? It's not a fight, though. That's important. You're never going right. to get anywhere in a fight. You know, I've learned, I, I never, I never fight. I'm just like, I just say it how it is. Because it's just, it's, you know, getting things with, with emotion, it just never works, you know? Because then they're going to get emotional. It just gets, but if you just say, hey, I'm not, I'm not seeking approval. I think that's where the, the problem is here, you know? And, um, and, and that's where I think that they'll be, they'll, they'll, they'll stand down and be like, okay, 
obviously this is important to you and I just don't understand it. And that's okay that I don't understand it. I'm never going to understand it, but I'll support you at least doing it. I want you to at least be happy, you know, because in the end, that's what the parent, the family wants, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, there you go. That was fun. I mm -hmm. like that one. So, um, other question. I have a good one here. You want to, this one, this one, you're really good at this. So hopefully you can address this. But, uh, the question is how do you go? Like when you're going into a show, I'm just trying to find it again, but how do you, when you're going into a show, how do you keep from comparing yourself to others, looking on Instagram, looking at your competitors, things like that. And like, you're good at this. You don't even know who you're competing against. <laughs> you're yeah. Just, so, but how do you, I guess, what would be a tip for someone? Cause I, I, I see people do this all the time, you know? So, um, I guess that is the first tip you said, don't even, don't even purposely go out of your way to research things. You know what I mean? I mean, because it's just going to play with your mind because first and foremost, physiques don't translate like you think they do to stage. Okay. Angles shadowing you might think somebody looks 100 percent ready by their photos but they step on stage and you're like whoa eh. or even if we're talking about like bikini it's like well they could actually be too much they could look too good <laughs> i guess in a way um so it's like you're not going to get anywhere by comparing yourself right because just going to play games with your mind and who knows what other people are doing with their photos and stuff like that you, you never know so just try not to even look, but even if you do happen to catch a glance, don't let it freak you out. Even if you see a girl backstage and she looks amazing, you know, I think there's people out there that look amazing backstage, but once they hit their poses, it's like, ah, I'm not as impressed as I was. You know? <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind. It's, um, it's not, not everything is how it appears on social media. And, uh, you know, sometimes people even use photos from previous shows and it's like you never know so it's yeah. best not to even look not to even compare yourself yeah because it that's the thing if you if you look at and this is kind of talking smack on you bikini girls but it's not intended to be but if you look at when a girl posts a bikini pic you're you're not too guilty you don't take very many selfies but if you look at when a girl posts a good selfie there's like 30 selfies that were taken to find True. that one and then it's face tuned and then it's under the, the goon lighting. We call it goon lighting when it's like the, the perfect lighting in the gym where it's like overhead angled lighting where you look harder and shadowed. It's like the best lighting in the gym, the best out of 30 pictures, some face tune, some contrast, some hardening. And you're like, oh, whoa, maybe push the waist just a bit, push the glutes just a bit. Right. And then you're like, damn, I can't compete against this girl. You're like, well, that girl can't compete against that girl. She don't even look like that. <laughs> like, yeah. How many times have you guys seen that where you meet someone in real life and then they don't look anything like their Instagram or they're mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of look like that person. You're like, I think maybe if I squint my eyes on a bad day, that kind of looks like that girl that was posting her pictures on Instagram, you know, and then like, that is a real thing. So don't, I, I honestly say don't even, like that girl doesn't even look like that. <laughs> like that's not even her, you know? So, um, and you're seeing a lot more of that these days too, like come out where people are like talking about it and, and exposing it and whatnot, mm -hmm. like uh, the Photoshopping of pictures. But that is a, uh, that is, I honestly, I feel like that's like a, a toxicity in our, in our world, you know, where people are like, like actually have issues with posting their own like beautiful self. You know what I mean? Like, You'll get someone who I see walking down the street or in a gym, and I'm like, damn, that girl looks good. Like, look at her. She looks great. Great abs, great whatever. But even she doesn't think she looks good enough to post, like, a raw picture of her. I think that's a problem. Like, they just don't see themselves for how good they are, you know? So if you're – if you all know someone like that, so don't get caught up in the picture because the girls that are you're freaking out about are probably doing that, you know? So um, that's – that's, I've, I've done it even a few times, even with a couple pros, like here and there. And I'm like, damn, this girl's going to be so good. Like she's going to be so good. And then she's on stage and I'm like, wait, that's that girl. Like she looked crazy for 12 weeks. And now that's like, on, did she mess up her carb load? And then I'm like, oh no, she just never looked like that <laughs> actually. It's like, so, so yeah, don't, don't freak yourself out with that. All right. Um, tips for keeping a strong, positive mindset, keeping those negative doubting insecurities. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. How to keep a positive mindset. Well, hmm. That is a very, that is an intriguing question. That, I, huh. <laughs> You're pretty good at it, think, but. I mean, I'm good at it, but how do I do it? I don't know. I, You know, honestly, I just, it's like one of those things I have to take a step back and realize how lucky I am to be in the position I'm in. And I'm not even just talking because it's me, but you are lucky to be in the position you are, right? If you're even able to compete if you're even able to get to the level of confidence to step on stage, like that's something, you know? 
So I think like sometimes we, you know, take it hour by hour and how we feel at that moment or even like how we base our happiness on how well we did at the last show or whatever. But if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, just realize that like you've got a lot going for you regardless of what happened at the show, you know, and um, just just know that like a lot of people will never be able to do that, which, uh, you know, I think a lot of people forget. So I have a, uh, I have a good, another good question for you. And I think that that's a great answer to that, by the way. Uh, I don't think I need to piggyback that one because you did a good job. You did a good job. Um, it is tough though, right? Cause you're always, and I think a lot of it comes down to looking at other pictures and stuff too and doubting yourself because mm-hmm. of those pictures. I think that the last question answered, answers a little bit of that, but, um, uh, here's, so the two questions, one is, you know, th- there's someone who's nine weeks out on here and they're saying, what do you do if you're sick? And you're nine weeks out and you, you know, and then this other question is, how do you do deal with forced downtime? Like when you had eye surgery, um, I just had hernia surgery Friday and I'm used, I'm used to working out five days a week, feeling frustrated. So you're, you know, that's actually a good, you know, cause you, you had that eye surgery yeah. and you had to be out for five weeks, was it? So, uh, yeah, yeah. And then some, but even I just had a trickle in the workouts, but I can relate. Yeah. It's tough. And so for the person who is nine weeks out and you're wondering if you can still do the show while you're sick. Um, so just understand that you need to do whatever you need to do to get better and not crush it in the gym. Cause when you go hard in the gym, you're going to temporarily lower your immune system. Okay. So whenever you put a great stress on your body, you're going to have a very, uh, just lower your immune system just a hair, just while you're recovering through that workout. Right. So you don't want to do that when you're in a more susceptible state, like being sick already. So people who are like forcing themselves to work out when they're already sick, you're probably going to make yourself sicker. So it's better to just take that time off. And then whatever you look like after that week is going to decide is you're going to have to talk to your coach and decide if it makes sense to still continue. You know, um, if you are eight, so at that point, if you're eight weeks out and you look like you're eight weeks out, great. If you look like you're 10 weeks out, you could probably catch up. If you look like you're 12 weeks out, then I'm pro- I'd probably be like, nah, let's just wait till another show. There's always another show. You know, there are scenarios like, you know, let's say like an Arnold or an Olympia or something where I'm like, I don't, well, we're just going to try to do it, you know, that type of thing. But usually you don't get, you usually don't get the same result. Like the, the problem isn't, can you get the girl lean enough or guy lean enough? It's, can they look right when they're lean enough doing that much stress to their body at the end? Because when you have, the harder you go, the longer you're going to need to give someone kind of a, that pre-prep or that pre-show break so their body looks like rested and looks good where they're not killing themselves and they don't look super, super tired. And the harder you go, the longer you're going to need for that. So instead of you needing three days, four days of like taking it a little bit easier in the gym and lightening up on your cardio, you're going to need like 10 days. So now you look at, okay, she needs, we need to put 12 weeks of prep into eight weeks, but now we need longer 10 days before the show. So really we only have six and a half weeks to set up for that. And unlikely we're going to be able to get all the results in six and a half weeks, right? So that's, that's where you got to look at things. And it, it comes down to not just can you be lean enough, but can you be ready, rested, full, not inflamed? Like, can you do all of it? And that's where the real question comes in. Right. And um, I want to add on to that as well. So like, you know, when you are prepping for a show, I think you should factor in that there are going to be weeks that you're, maybe you're sick one week. So don't start your prep kind of at the last minute. It's better to be ready sooner than later. Be ahead of it and and factor in. There might be a week that you feel sick. There might be a week where something weird happens. I don't know. Your flights got all delayed. You're all messed up and jet lag. And I know that happens to me sometimes too, you know, where you're going to miss some days in the gym. And I think too, sometimes, I mean, depending on where you are in your prep, honestly, I think people kind of put too much weight on like if they're if they miss like three days in the gym like it's going to be this drastic backtracking I don't think that's the case honestly I think your diet is more important at that point if you take three days off from your diet and eat whatever oh you'll be able to see that as far as the gym doubt it I doubt it unless we're really cutting it close to prep you know what I mean unless we're really like already in the in the the like we don't have any days to give like we have to be we're already uh behind schedule so I think like it's like one of those mental things and I think we've talked before too whenever you take some time off from the gym you feel gross right I don't feel I feel I don't 
feel any different. Take, I don't feel weak. I don't feel gross if I take any time off from the gym. But if I take, if I take three, three days off of my diet, I will. So it's kind of like, you know, is it's like, I think most of it's a mental thing. Like if you have to take three days off from the gym, probably not going to do much. It's more of a mental thing, no, but you sure. better stay on your diet though. Yeah. Especially since you're not putting that calorie output. So at least <laughs> make sure your diet is on point. Yeah. Usually when someone's unable to work out or sick, I'll increase amino acid intake if it's not already there on them and then decrease their carbohydrates because they're not needing the instant energy. Um, definitely not having any post-workout carbs is, that's taken off their meal plan, any intra-workout carbs taken off their meal plan because it's unnecessary. And then, um, yeah, just let them just chill and, you know, use that week as a deload week. The cool thing about taking a week off is that you resensitize yourself to, to a little bit to the gym so you can kind of get a big stimulus when you go in the gym because it's, you know, you went from nothing to something. So now this is more than last week. So it does res- it does kind of have its own um, – it kind of accumulates like that rest period kind of accumulates a small interest of results, right? Cause now you're getting, you're resensitized to exercise. So we did it like we call it indirect deload where, you know, we didn't want to do a deload, but we did it anyway. So now let's use it to an advantage and let's use this to get a stimulus out of the workout. So now going from last week with no activity to this week with some activity, it's better. And it's going to be, you know, because it's more, you're probably going to get better results. So just a spike in results. So you might even make up for it too. And you're going to feel good. And the cool thing is when you have a forced week downtime, you have a really, really heightened sense of um, just intensity in the gym and motivation in the gym because you just, one, you haven't worked out for a week and you just feel like you're like, I got to catch up, I got to catch up. It's like there's a natural thing that we're just trying to like catch up in the gym. And um, and, and also you haven't been in the gym, so you, you want to be in the gym, which is I've always found, you know, a positive thing. I, I, for me, two days is like my max though. I'm like, I, I, and I, if I have to deload ever, which I don't really – I'm not doing prep anymore, so I don't really need to deload, you know, because I'm like, I'm, I'm fine with my rest period. My intensity isn't crazy, crazy high. I'm not, you know, doing a show. So, um, but when I take two days off from the gym, like I'm traveling or whatever, I can't wait to get back in the gym. Actually, to be honest, I don't even want to talk to anyone until I get to the gym the third day. Like I get so, if I come into work, I'll be, I'll be cranky for sure. So I won't even come in because until I work out if it's like day three, because I just, I just not a good, I'm just like, I feel I just feel like, I don't know, maybe it gets, maybe I'm actually angry. Maybe it helps me be nicer. <laughs> I don't know, but I just feel like sloppy and gross. I don't know. It's totally mental. It's not the truth, you know, but that's just how I feel. So I think you kind of answered the the next question too, about like having to deal with an injury while you're, you know, training forced recovery. It's kind of like what, what we were just talking about, but in a longer, I guess, time frame. I mean, during that point, it does suck when you can't work out, but you want to. It sucks. But when you do get back into the gym, you're going to be like, oh, I can't wait, you know? So it's kind of like, depending on the injury, you know, you do what you can and work around the body parts, and but you never want to make anything worse by um, jumping the gun and getting back into the gym sooner than later, or sooner than you should, I should say. Yeah. So it's just like, during that time, got to make sure the diet's on point again. Yeah. Better at least, at least maybe try not to backtrack at that time or, or put on a, an excess amount of body fat. But, you know, just you don't want to regret it and just be like, oh, I should have just waited another two weeks yeah. before hitting the gym again. And you know what? Um, we go over it. I'm going to go over it this week and do a video of like body fat in the off season. But I, for those of you like wondering what is kind of the markers, I put this graph out yesterday for markers for off seasons for different scenarios of where you should be in body fat. What is the date today? The 13th, 14th. So if you look back on my Instagram on the 13th, I posted this chart I did yesterday um, about like off season body fats. And I think that that's something um, that it's important to address of like where you should be in terms of not body fats, but like body weight post show. Um, Because I always say, you know, six to 8% for Ashley, but she's competing super actively. Um, Make sure you clarify that's percent of my body, body weight, weight because yeah, six I've to 8% never body been fat be a crazy. six yeah. to eight percent body fat. No, yeah, six to eight percent of body my body weight, weight above. So stage if you want to do my the math, I'm like one twenty three. Yeah, so she's let's just say one twenty <laughs> for simple math. Um, that would be ten percent would be twelve pounds. So probably closer to like eight to eight to or yeah, closer to eight would be in that range for her if she was like somewhere in the six to eight week out marker. Ashley is usually in the three week out to four week out marker, so she's going to be on the lower end of that. Oh, it's usually even like less six, than that. six to four. Yeah, it's like six mm-hmm. to four for you. But you're active competitors, so sometimes yeah. 
people get confused and they're like, he was always saying stay like super close to stage weight. Well, I'm like, no, we're always referencing Ashley. But if you're going for a, let's say you're not competing till next year, that's a totally different body fat or body weight gain post show. It should still never be like 20%, anything stupid like that. But yeah, 10%, uh, 12% above stage weight, that type of thing. So anyway, that's something I'll go into, we'll go into too, but that's just kind of goes into that question mm -hmm. of, of it as well. Um, so actually another question came in and this one is like impossible to answer, but it always comes up is it was about the menstrual cycle and when, how long should it take you to get it back? That's a weird one because you have people like Ashley who keep it the whole time. You have people who take, you know, like as soon as they start prep and their calories aren't even low, it just stops. I mean, it's just, there's just no like yeah. rhyme or reason specifically. There's for, a lot of myths that go around that, right? Yeah. And it, they think like, oh, if I'm under 12% body fat, that's when people lose it. No, there's girls that like are still super soft <laughs> yeah. that lose it just from just the, the slightest bit of like activity it's crazy how we're so different in that aspect of it you know what i mean that doesn't have any any correlation yeah, it's more of like stress yeah i don't i honestly don't know i've never been able to figure it out but I, but we're I, all different just so you know yeah <laughs> that's the answer i've been in a lot of um doctor's appointments especially when the you know we do the like labs for people or whatever i've been in a lot of in the appointments initially and they're like do you have one of the questions that they ask ask females is you know do you have irregular periods and then and then the nurse practitioner, she's like, I'm just going to check yes because every one of you does it. I was like, like, is it that common? She's like, it's everyone that does this. Like, everyone has irregular periods. Or something. I was like, that's, I'm like, that's crazy. She's like, it's so rare that someone is just normal, like who's in prep, who's super active. She's like, and it's not just prep. It's like anyone who's super active, like sports people and high schools and things like that. She's like, the more people move, the more weird things happen. Um, you know, I've had it. Ha it's, it's really become apparent to me, like the longer I've done this is also with um, like – uh, nursing people who are nursing and I now when I have someone who's nursing they're like yeah I just had my kid six months ago I'm breastfeeding I'm like hey just so you know like before you start this there's a, a decent percentage of chance that when you start moving becoming more active that your, your milk production is going to be a lot lower like I can't do anything about that on my end so just know that going in if that's what you're ready for then then it is what it is you know there's we could try to keep your high calories pretty high we could try to keep your your cardio low and, and keep your your exercise to what you would think would be normal and sometimes even then you still have those issues, so. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, I have another um, question here, and it is, what do you love about the sport? There's so much I love about the sport, but I think it'd be fun to say what I hate about the sport. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So believe it or not, there are some things I hate about the sport. <sighs> one one is um, the, the day after the show when I have to pack up, you know, and uh, – my hotel room is a disaster. I I try so hard to keep it organized. And it is up until like the last day, up until I actually go on stage. Because on show day, I get so frantic and I'm just, I just throw things everywhere. Like it is so clean and organized until the day of the show. You know what I mean? At that point, it's just tornado. It's a tornado. I, I just, I don't know. I just some other things on my mind. So that is something that I hate about competing. Um, another thing I hate about competing is, especially when you do show to show, I'm trying to get this tan off, you know. <laughs> my skin hates me right now. Like my skin, I scrub it, I shave it, I scrub it again. My skin's raw. I've got these scabs on my skin where I scrub too much. And it's just so dry. It's like alligator skin because yeah, of the, the tan and then... I hate that. We send picture. I send uh, emojis to uh, Ashley of the lizards when it's like <laughs> week three. <laughs> My <laughs> show skin to show, yeah, like a lizard. Yeah, um, you know, I'm trying to think. What do I, you know, what um, hate about the sport? I ha I would say I hate the smell of fish in microwaves at gyms Ew. when it's close to gym time. Yeah, Gross. that's that. There's nothing worse than a. Okay, that I will say that that is the one thing that inconveniences me a little bit about when. Uh, like let's say a girl's cooking at the house and she's in prep and all she's eating is tilapia when I'm like you could eat chicken it's fine like do ground turkey 99% ground turkey same thing and it like the whole house smells like fish and I'm like uh, or the hallways of hotels <laughs> also yeah. like that's 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 uh that's pretty bad oh and another thing I hate is the post show hangover mm. which is uh, nothing to do with alcohol but it's that feeling of like 
you competed and then like the next day, sometimes it drags on till Monday where you just feel like you got hit by a bus, you know, not, not for any reason, except for you just gave all your emotions. Like you just, just zapped of energy and you're just like, ah. and then you try to train on Monday and you just feel like a zombie. Oh yeah. Like just the like, ah. just, just exhausted mentally, uh, more mentally than physically, I'd say, but it definitely translates into your workouts. I hate that. And I hate jet lag too. Yeah. Travel, traveling's hard to the East coast because you lose the time. I will say that. Um, that's probably the only thing that I, that I like in terms of the travel that I don't like is the traveling to the East coast. And I love the East coast. Oh, I love the Southeast coast. I guess you should say. Um, but the, the travel is the only thing I hate. And I, I don't know if it's cause I always pick the wrong flights, but I think I've solved that problem now. I'm leaving like Thursdays instead of leaving like Wednesday nights, like at midnight and getting there like at 6 a.m. because the, mm-hmm. the time difference. That's what always screws me. But yeah, that's probably my only things. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, well, let's say what we love about the sport now. Yeah. <laughs> everything else. Yeah, literally everything else. Everything else. I love being a fit princess for a day and <laughs> just doing my makeup and trying different suits and my hair a different way and just being like, I feel like, like I've accomplished something great. Like I've even just stepping on stage, knowing I have like a really, like I worked hard for this physique is like such a cool feeling. And I feel so like, like light on my feet and like efficient, I guess. Yeah. I like the feeling of being like stage lean. I I think it feels nice. Um, but just like, I don't know. And all the memories you make is so much fun. And just like the feeling of accomplishment, just regardless, it's like, this is a cool feeling. Like, I did something that most people will never experience, so. Yeah. Um, To be honest, like, there's so much I love about, I feel like, you know, it's not just so much I love about sport, and you you feel the same way, because we've talked about it before, but I feel like I owe the sport so much, you know? Like, it's made my life completely different, just like Mm -hmm. it's made your life completely different. So, I always have this, like, I don't know, I've, it's like, I guess like an old school thing in me where I want to honor that, you know, I want to honor that, and I want to, like, always honor like you know the weeder family the manians who've like made this like a a possibility for me to have this great life because of like their their pursuit of creating this you know um and it's uh yeah it's just it's a to imagine that this is a job what i get to do every day is pretty crazy to say out loud you know because it's it's so it's so ridiculous that when people ask me what i do i can't even say it like, I can't even tell them. So I just tell them, oh, I'm just a personal trainer. I'm just a, I'm a trainer. And it's an easy way to answer because if you at, tell them what you actually do, it's like, it's so, it's so much, you know? And um, and so <laughs> I just always I'm like, yeah, I'm just a coach. <laughs> I'm just a trainer. Because it's like, there's so much that we do. And it's like so cool that we do it. We travel and we're on this world stage. And, um, you know, we get to impact people's lives that, you know, some of them we never even met. And then they come up to us and like, yeah, I started this because I watched your videos or I started this and, Mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't afford prep. So I like kind of listened to all your stuff or whatever, you know, that type of thing. Um, So it's just been a a real blessing for sure. Um, I mean, everything in the the hard parts, obviously any work is, has its issues. Any work is going to be hard, you know, Um, you know, the the hard things of, uh, you know, sometimes clients won't get the results you want or, you know, they're not adhering to their diet and it's frustrating. You want to be successful, like things like that. But the the greater scheme of things it's like man what an honor you know what a cool thing you know i could never retire because this isn't really doesn't feel like works i could never just like just i I, I can't how do you retire from something you're not really doing like how do you retire from work if it's not work it's like i have to do something you know like how would i yeah so like yeah i don't know i I just love it to be honest the cool thing too is like it was um i was at a show this weekend and there's these two girls that got off stage and, um, like you get these moments where you forget, cause we do so many shows and we have so many people we work with and I've done this, you know, since I was 16 years old. Right. So it's, it's a long time. And, um, you forget, you know, you forget how special it is to some people because you're just going through the motions. You're just like, Oh, it's another show. It's another day. I'm at 20 shows this year. And you try to never to lose that. Like mm-hmm. you try to never lose it, but it's, an, it's just, it's just natural. You know, I've been, I mean, if I'm going to 20, let's say I'm going to 15 shows a year since I was. 18. I mean, we're talking 400 shows or something. I don't know. Something like that. So yeah, you're going to lose a little bit of that specialness to it. You're just like, it becomes normal, but then you get these moments. And this weekend there was this, um, there's these two girls, they did their novice class and, uh, they're both our girls. And, um, 
it was it was like the cutest thing and i wish i wish i caught it i caught it like right after like uh, on on camera but not during and they got off stage and they were like their their teammates and they were they were hugging and they were like super excited they were like jumping up and down and like hugging each other like i can't believe i did it i can't believe we did it like it was like it was such a joyous moment to watch and it was so like beautiful to watch that and i like took a step back and they know who they are and uh, I took a step back and I was like, you know, remember these things because like this is, um, you know, I don't know their personal life, right, on that level. This could be their greatest athletic thing they've ever accomplished, right? That could be the moment, their greatest athletic accomplishment at this point so far in their life. And it means so much to people to do that. And I'll always, the, the, the time I first stepped off stage, that to me felt like the most accomplished. Like it felt like, I mean, it's, it sounds stupid to, to, to like, use it as a simile, but it felt like, like graduating college or something. Like it was like a same type of like reward feeling where you're like, I did it. I did it, you know, or like, mm -hmm. yeah. So it was, this, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Um, and so those moments really keep me, keep me going and keep me like, yeah, that's awesome. Or like, you know, you get someone with a big weight loss and they're like, you know, you see their wedding pictures or whatever. And it's like, you know, it's just, it's just special. You know, it's a special thing we do. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not just, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't want to ever downplay anyone else's work, but we're not just like, you know, bagging groceries at a grocery store. You know what I mean? We're not just like, it's not a replaceable job that it's like that easy where someone else could just do it. You know, it's a, it's, it's changing lives. It's impacting people. And I don't know, it's just really, it's a really special thing when you see those things. So. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It was cool. It was, it was, it was heartwarming for sure. Yeah. Oh, mm. well, that was so good to hear. <laughs> yeah, well, is there any other questions or should we wrap her up? Um, I think that would be it today. Okay. I think that was a good episode. Heck I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know? There we go. <laughs> the people agree. The, the, we have a, we have a uh, audience now. So uh, <laughs> any, I'm going to figure out these buttons. We have some, we have some good buttons. <laughs> anyway, button. I guess that's it. Ashley, anything else? Any signing off for you? Thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate you, and uh, stay tuned for next week. Hopefully, we get to you on Monday. Yeah, all right. Talk get to you guys later. Track. Bye. Bye.